we have been tasked with a challenge. We're gonna try and open up the most remote campsite in the Flinders Ranges. We're about to go off grid, cross country. Cutting a path through a fair bit of uncharted territory. Oh, there's not much in that. It's in an absolutely cracking location, spectacular as heck, and super remote. This is why I come out here. We love it! Hold the balls, it is straight down down there. I don't know if we're gonna make it or if we can even do it. No, 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 no. This is off grid. G'day, welcome back to Off Grid. We're currently in the Flinders Ranges, and this is a bit of a special episode. You see, we have been tasked with a challenge. We're heading into the Bendleby Ranges where the owner, Charlie, has asked us if we'd do him a bit of a favour. You see, he's lost touch with a campsite he put in right down the back end of the ranges several years ago. And he wants to know if that campsite is viable for future use. So he's asked us if we wouldn't mind trying to push a track into the campsite and letting him know what it's like. Apparently, it's in an absolutely cracking location, spectacular as heck, and super remote. I don't know if we're gonna make it or if we can even do it, but to me, that was like a red rag to a bull. I had to give it a go. This is off grid, and if you can't tell, I am frothing. <laughs> Boy, Steph Harley, got a copy? Yeah, brother, we've got ya. Been a uh, couple of months between drinks. You'll notice my eyebrows have grown back since the old uh, NT day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, it has been a hot minute, so keen to get back into it. Flinders Rangers have only ever done a very, very, very small portion out here, and I think from this trip, we're gonna try and do the whole lot. South to north, north to south, suck as much of it up as we can, but I think you guys have done a bit out here, haven't you? Yeah, I've been out here quite a few times with the family growing up in SA, but um, I tell you what, it's some pretty specky scenes at this time of year, especially. I'm frothing. Let's make a mile, get out to the station, say good day to the folks. Perfect, man. Sounds good. Right on cue, we're pointing the rigs towards the Bendleby Ranges with the plan to meet up with a good mate of ours. Charlie is the owner of this 37,000 acre sheep station directly in the heart of the Flinders. When we got word of a campsite that Charlie wanted to reopen, we couldn't resist taking on the challenge. With a few pointers and a map of the property, we're straight into dropping the pressures and getting stuck in. Well, it'll be hard not to notice. Brand new set of wheels on the back there. You know, one of the big perks of my job is I get to try out so many new products. Jawa has reached out to us and said, why don't you take a couple of our new hybrids? Now, push for a few days. Of course I was up for that. Didn't quite tell them what we had planned, i.e. trying to push a new track out to the most remote campsite, the Flinders Ranges, but still, <laughs> if they survive this, they'll survive anything. I think we're, we're plowing through a fair bit of uncharted territory there. So are we talking like chainsaws out? Correct, yeah. Clearing the path. By all accounts, it sounds like there's a pretty specky campsite at the end of all of this. Or Charlie has just absolutely stitched us up. Correct. If it's as good as he says it is, then it's all going to be worth it. But yeah, look, we're going to be pushing through a fair bit of scrub to get in there, I think. So. Okay, look, I'm here for the challenge. Have a go at that for a view. Holy heck. The Bendleby Ranges in the Flinders Ranges, South Australia. Utterly spectacular. Quintessentially Flinders scenery. Like a lot of these properties, especially in the southern half of the Flinders, they're all working pastoral properties. Bendleby is no different. Sheep out here, they also muster feral goats. There's a multitude of tracks out here, lots and lots of different campsites. They offer something for just about everyone out here, including us. And as far as the Flinders go, if you're heading through this way, you've got to stop and check out Bendleby because it is, look at that, look at that. Mind-bogglingly beautiful. Traversing this mountainous landscape with the vans in tow may well prove to be difficult. However, if this campsite is as epic as we've been told, the effort will be well worth it. We're soon approaching some steep descents and washout sections, which are proving a bit tricky to cross with the vans. Oh. Soon enough, one of them has caught Harley out. Well, we've just come through this washed out creek here. This is why the track we're about to try and find is non-existent because it doesn't take much rain out here, but when you do get a little bit, she just washes away. This is one of those examples here. This little creek here is not much to look at, but we couldn't have got ourselves a bit hung up. Now, what I'm suggesting we do is we put one time Stephanie <laughs> underneath the wheel as a chock, drive over Steph, which will enable us to clip. No, we won't do that. What I do reckon we do though is use something very similar to Steph, and that is a max track. 
Harley is right on the van sliders here. And thankfully, it's saving the bodywork. Bit of a kick off the back tracks there. <laughs> textbook, absolutely textbook. Really tight through here. Man, jeepers creepers. Just trying to keep an eye on the roof of the van. A lot of low hanging branches. According to the old mud map Charlie gave us, if we descend down here, we will find an old creek line, which I believe that there is in front of us. And it's from here we've got to head overland back this way, way back into there, in order to try and pick up that camp. Now, Charlie's actually told us to keep an eye out for something quite significant along the way. I don't know whether we'll find it or not, but there's a hole in the ground out here that very, 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 very few people have ever seen, including one of the owners of the property. That's how rare it is. So I don't know whether we'll find it or not. This looks like a good spot to turn in just here, actually. We're about to go off-grid cross-country. Off-grid cross-country. Oh, and it looks thick and nasty in there. We could be the first people to have ever done this with a brand new van. Now that we've got our basic entry point lined up, we're gonna run ahead on foot and try and spot out the best line. There's two things I wanna be careful of. One, doing damage to the van. It's very tight, looks overhanging branches. And number two, punctures. This wood out here has been standing dry, sharp, for decades. I'm gonna chuck the big rig into low range. The main reason for that is because I'm just gonna be creeping along nice and slow. And low is just such an easy way to do it. All right, let's start making them off. With the line picked out, it's time to start nudging in. Remember with the vans, you take everything way wider than you ordinarily would. Yeah, looking good there, mate. Keep coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Harley's got to run on, got his jog on. Yeah, come out wide there and swing around in. Quite steep up through here too. Tell you what though, Stephanie, you're not bad. As soon as the fun comes out, you're very quick to jump in the hot seat. You literally are the one that just said you're driving this. I would never do that. Oh, mate. <laughs> We've been following this water course with the plan on trying to cross it. And right now, it's about picking the best line that'll minimise the angles the vans are going to get on. Cutting tracks like it ain't no thing. <laughs> I reckon that looks like the crossing <clears throat> over there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Down, in and around. And then nearly try and follow that goat track back up. Follow that up. goat track back up. Look, it's going to be a bit of a challenging line. The, the issue is going to be is when he gets to the bottom and the car starts coming up and the van's still going down, whether we get that little bit too much angle. So luckily he's got the smaller van and the bigger wheels. Should give us a good read, but if he can come in a little bit low like he has, it might save us a bit of trouble. I don't want to attack it front on because front on the angles can be a bit strange. If you go sideways or diagonal across it, you can often walk your way through a bit better. So I'm just going to give myself a bit of room here. There's a couple of rocks. I'm almost going to use as a bit of a bridge. See if I can just crawl up through here. Just that bush in front of you. I'm just, uh, just going to go the old rear diff lock. Steady, steady. Oof. Slow up, dropping in. Oh, there you are, you're out. Woo -hoo -hoo. Very nice, mate, very nice. We might see whether we can try and fill this creek bed in here, I reckon. Just a few rocks, just reduce that gnarly angle. You know, it's funny, I saw this crossing and I thought to myself, I'll just walk through that. Which, look, I did walk through it, but at the same time, there's more to this than you might think. Longer van, bigger van, 33s, lower slung. This won't be as easy as it looks. Right, mate, bring it down here slow and steady, and I'll edge into it, and as you do, I think I'll just pop those max tracks under for your rears. I think that's what's going to be the problem, not your fronts. Keep it coming, a little bit of passenger. Oh, steps in the car. I like it. Yeah, go on. Have a little go. Hold up there. there might be a bit of skull dragon going on here. Rightio, Steph, pretty much on that line. And you can just creep forward. All right, here we go. That's it, just slow her down, nice and gentle. Keep it going. Yeah, go, 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 Keep it going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That'll be beautiful. There she yes. is. Yeah, baby. Yes. Easy. Had me a bit concerned there. 
saw the wheel spin start to happen and I thought, holy heck, but you can see what's happened there. We just filled that gap in with the Max Tracks. Build another one over there. Straight through. A few hours to go yet, I think. This one's not gonna be done anytime soon. So that's signs to come. This rock goes perfect. Ooh. Still got water. How good. Judging by that crossing, something tells me this is only the beginning. No vehicle tracks around here, but just about everywhere you look, it's game trails or animal tracks. I'll tell you what, if you were just gonna follow those, you'd get pretty mighty lost. Makes me wonder sometimes, how do they know where they're going? As the day rolls on, we're getting more and more remote in the Flinders Ranges, and the track is getting tighter, wilder, and harder to follow. Oh, there's not much in that. Around every bend is a new challenge. Dense section of bush or fallen trees across the track. And soon, the chainsaw is getting a real workout as we continue trying to forge a path ahead. Here we go, gun show. Gun show. I am all that is man! I am all that is stuck. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Take your shirt off. Give the people what they want. Very nice, mate. I think if you get your left left wheel about here. Yep, there you are. Straighten up there, mate. Well, I'll be stuffed. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's the bloody holes in the ground. That means we are spot on line, and also, more importantly, we found something pretty bloody unique. Well, she's a pretty unremarkable looking bit of kit, that, just a hole in the ground. But what's significant about this is that given the fact that this farm or property has been owned by five generations of people. Only a handful of people have actually seen this mine. What's more spectacular is no one actually knows who put it here or why they put it here. They don't even know what they were mining for. Now, there is a little bit of a tale. We're not too sure if it's true or not. A couple of miners out here digging for gold, we think. We're not sure. They kept finding small, tiny, tiny traces. So they keep digging. Find another tiny trace a month later. Keep digging. Another tiny trace a month later. Took these traces of gold in to be weighed. And it turns out it was little pieces of the brass thumbtacks that were on their boots that they were knocking off on the rocks as they were digging their way in. Another little natty fact about this, Charlie was out here mustering goats on his motorbike one day. All of a sudden the goats just disappeared. He couldn't find them anywhere. He happened to find the mine, walked up, looked into it. All the goats were sitting down there looking back up at him. That's where they go when it's stinging hot in a summer's day. And I don't blame them either. But just the simple fact that even Charlie's dad hadn't seen this, and the fact that we have no idea why it's here or who put it here, pretty darn remarkable. But finding this means we are on the right track. Camp is actually not too far that way. As we continue to push further into the hills, we're nudging closer and closer to a new route directly to this campsite. Jeez, Stephanie, how bloody lucky are we? We are on top of the Hungry Rangers at the minute with just a 360 degree view. I just, I love this so much. This is so special. Cutting a path in through the top of these ranges. We have just come through absolute scrub. This is as good as it gets. Well, how's that for a view, eh? Now, according to the mud map that Charlie gave us, you can see one or two tracks up there. One of them, I think the one on the right, is our access track into camp. Camp should be nuzzled in the base of those hills down there, which is good because it's blowing an absolute gale up here at the top of the moment, but well, you can see as well as I can, it looks like we've got fairly easy and open going now to lead us into camp. So, and hey, here's the good news. We're in the southern half of the Flinders Ranges right now. We've still got all that northern half to go. It is a tough gig. I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders, but I'm doing all right. Come on, get in your trucks, let's go. Have a go at those views. I didn't think we could top today, but it just keeps getting better and better. Absolutely stunning. According to the mud map, science and geology, put them all together. Camp should be just over this rise here. Jeez, that's bloody good news, mate, because I am tonguing for a beer. We are right down south now, so this should be, technically speaking, one of the more remote camps out here. Have a go at that. Wowzers. Oh, geez, that looks good. As soon as you come over that hill there, mate, that is impressive. I think we have done it. We've managed to push through. It's been a big day, but uh, we're almost there. Well worth it. I think we'll rock, paper, scissors it for uh, cooking duties tonight. We won't need to rock, paper, scissors it for beer duties, though. You just kick back and relax, mate. We'll cover dinner tonight. 
After almost an entire day, we finally found the original track and reopened access to this campsite. And what a spot it is. Nestled right in the foothills of the Flinders Ranges, you really couldn't pick a better location. that time of night, sun's just gone down, beer o'clock is well and truly past. What's exciting is, <whistles> brand new van. Now, this bad boy is feature packed. Have a go at the outside area here. The living area, the kitchen area, the entertaining area. Have a go at these pantries here. All dust sealed. In the right spot too, you can fit so much, they really do fit a whole heap, but they're in the right spot. Here's the kitchen area, need some salt, it's there. Need pepper, it's there. Bit of a bachelor pad in here at the moment, we won't go too deep inside here, but what I've got in there, is a diesel heater, it's crazy. Got down to four degrees the other night, it was 22 inside there, I was sleeping in my undies, we don't need to go into that. Of course I've got a toilet, I've got a shower, got a big stereo system, got about 15 lights in there, heaps of 12 volt. Oh, I've got a smart TV, connects to the internet. The number one thing though, after a few days out bush on these super dusty tracks that I am frothing about with regards to this van, not one speck of dust has got in anywhere. So far, not one speck of dust. Come here and have a look at this. These copper brunt of it out here, you can see the line. Look at the dust here. Yeah, that pleases me greatly. There's nothing worse than getting dust inside your van. For me, it's that time of night. Crack a brewski, get the fire going, watch the sun go down. I don't know where Steph and Harley have gone. I could put a bet on it though, hand in hand, over the hills, just doing that lovey dovey romancy type thing. I'm just bitter and twisted. It's just me and a cameraman. Want a beer, mate? He just said yes. <laughs> So after a big day of driving today, we've got in and we're going for something quick, easy. It's just a fan favorite of ours, Stephanie. So we're going for a yellow curry. It is usually a vegetable curry, Stephanie, but- We found some meat. We found a bit of beef, bit of leftover from our steaks the other night. So we're just throwing it all in. That is a wrap on day one. To be sitting around a fire with a cold drink in hand, that is what it's all about, folks. And if you thought today was epic, Keep watching because we've got a few spots coming up that'll blow your socks off. G'day folks, hope you are enjoying the show. You may have noticed that around the campfire of an evening, everybody has been having a glass of white or red. That is of course because we've got a bunch of off-track wines with us and right now they've got a cracking deal going. You can get yourself a mixed dozen and save 20 bucks, normally $118.50, Right now it's 98 bucks 50, however they've got a little bit more thrown in for you. You're gonna get yourself the exact same tumbler that I'm using, not this one, this is mine. I actually use this for everything. Coffee in the morning, everything, the whole lot. Wine at night, the lot. Free tumbler and, this is the kicker as far as I'm concerned, free shipping anywhere in Australia. Folks, head to offtrackwines.com.au and grab it while you can. We're giving you guys the opportunity to save up to 40% site-wide on fullwheeldrive247.com. In case you're wondering what's on our website, you better go and check it out because we stock all the major brands that you know and love. GME, Steady, Runva, Dometic, Bendix, Castrol, there is so many more. Do yourself a favour, jump onto fullwheeldrive247.com right now and save a stack of cash. The morning light reveals another cracking day. Today's plan is to unhitch the vans and go explore one of the more iconic tracks that you can do in the Flinders. Have a go. 7.24 in the AM, sun's just come up. Just thought I'd sneak up on top of the hill and just get a bit of a look around. You know, you're probably thinking, Graham, you wouldn't have too many items left on the old bucket list. Nothing could be further from the truth. You know, the more I travel around, the more I see, especially with off-grid, the more items I'm adding to that bucket list, and one of those, of course, at the top in the moment, is the Flinders Rangers. I poked in here a couple of years ago, very, very briefly, and fell in love with the place. Now, heading south to north, and taking all the different stations, outcrops, drives. And it's not about just ticking these things off either, it's about getting out here and really absorbing them, getting into them, seeing what fire would they burn out here. Have a look at the four-wheel drive tracks. 
Have a look at the stations, speaking to the locals. It's all about that. It's about getting out here, sucking it all up. And that's why I do these weird little walks in the morning. This is we get out of camp and have a bit of a look around, especially first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening. Folks, put it on your bucket list. Make sure you tick it off, but don't just tick it, live it. Live in the dream, boys. Live in the dream. Win the morning, win the day. I'm not wasting any time on getting brekkie cooked up for the crew. With a morning feed done and dusted, we waste zero time on getting camp packed away and throwing some fuel in the rigs. With a plan to tackle some of the tougher ridgeline tracks today, something tells me we're gonna have some palm sweating moments ahead. South Australia, she gets a bit of a reputation as being a flat state, for the majority it is. Let me tell you something though, come out here to the Flinders Ranges, she's anything but flat. You're never on the flat. You're either going straight up or you're going straight back down again. What I've found, especially when you're towing, when you're coming down some of these hills, you want to know that at the bottom, you can pull up. Down here, I've got the Bendix Ultimate Tow Brake Controller. It's so easy to adjust on the fly if you need to, i.e. there's a bigger hill coming up, tiger up a bit. Just give us a bit more brakes. It's not so bad, i.e. coming up these hills, coming down the sort of gentler ones. Bring it back again if you need to. What I'm getting at though is no matter what you're doing when it comes to towing, you've got to have the ability to stop, especially in the Flinders Ranges because it's not just about slowing down, it's about stopping so you can take in the breathtaking views, folks. Before long, we've unhitched the vans and we're heading straight for the hills. We've just dropped the vans off and not 10 minutes later, creeping up a ridge line. Have a look at that view, will you? While Steph's helping drive the camera car, Harley's sweating without his co-pilot. We're just going along one of the narrowest ridge tops I think there must be in the Flinders Ranges. This is absolutely stunning, incredible. But the one thing that, a little nerve wracking, she's straight down either side. There's, there's not much room to play. Holy balls, it is straight down down there. <laughs> And by the looks of that, we've got a little bit of a climb there. <laughs> we haven't even reached the hardest part, but the track is already testing us. Oh, it's a little bit of a challenge, this. Jeez. How are you going back there, Harley? You good? Just need to give it a little bit of a nudge up one of these, I think. Yeah, those wombat holes were a little bit bigger than you think until you sort of creep up to them. Yeah, they're a little bit tricky, but I think we'll get it. Maybe not. I think we're just rocking at the minute. Come on, Harley. You can do it. All right, change of tactic. Let's go around that big hole that I keep getting stuck in there. There we go. Got it. You're beauty. Nice work, mate. Third time's a charm. Just a different line and a little bit of a nudge. With the warm up done and dusted, it's time to get into the real fun. Billy Goat Ridge. This is one of the Flinders staples, an absolute iconic of the Flinders Ranges. Steep, scrabbly, and uh, affording a great view over the entire ranges as you go. Well, we're pretty lucky here, like being in the southern Flinders where we can actually drive the cars up onto the mountain ridge line and get these specky views. I don't think there's too many options to drive the cars up in, in more of the central Flinders area, so bring on these stunning views. Billy Goats Ridge is apparently no easy walk in the park. And judging by the view ahead, I'd say we have quite the track ahead of us. Just coming up to 37,000 kilometres on the big rig, but I can count on one hand the number of times to put this thing in low range and actually had to drive something. So I really don't know how it's going to perform. A lot of bouncing around going on back there. Yeah, there's a few up and downs in that one there. She's a spicy meatball. She's a fairly steep one. Yeah, there's not much uh, visibility over the top of that. What do you do? Just hope for the best. Well, correct. You watch the person in front of you go straight over it and go, well, they didn't seem to hit anything. Yep. There's not much there. Have a go at this, folks. Flinders Ranges. Nah, there's nothing hardcore in South Australia. Super steep, there's big wombat holes, it's off camber, there's a massive rock step up there, and all the way up, it's just a vertical drop straight down. I can hear goats over there, I think they might be laughing at us. We've just had to winch the camera car up here. I'm next. 
you kind of lose your line when you get here because you can't see where you're going. Like that. Around the corner here. And up we go. It makes us look bad. I don't want to say it's emasculating. So if you come forward sort of on a straight angle. Yeah, and that's pretty much the line, isn't it? Straight up. Yeah, correct. Straight up from there. That'll get you straddling that one behind me too. Yep, that's it, mate. Up you go. Right, head down, down. Yep, there you are. Go, that's you. Easy, mate. Big 62, loving it. Come forward, finally. Go that way a little bit now. Yep, that's it. Yep. Yeah, look, the grey man's made that look pretty easy there. So I'm just gonna go with the same tactic. Let's just drive straight up there. No recovery, nothing. That's a- uh, Bold move. Yeah, <laughs> easy as that. His tires are a little bit bigger than us. <laughs> it looks like just a straight drop off the side. Turn in a little bit now. Towards me, towards me, towards me. Oh, slowly, right. slowly, slowly, slowly. Let's go back. I want you to come up much slower this time. He's looking a bit nervous. Turn up now. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Woo -hoo, I'll run. Don't kick right up. Beautiful! It feels like we just got to squish there him. There we go. There was like half an inch in that between driving it and not driving it. Just got the next little hard part to go. This one looks worse, if I'm being honest. Yeah, look, this isn't the fun one. We're lucky we got the winch out. Yeah, yep. Rightio, this rock here, as you know, you're going to clip that with your passenger side. And we're going to keep that line all the way up here. Once we get to here, it's just going to be a slight bit of left hand down when I tell you to. Easy as that. I like it. And watch your throttle controller on. I've just dropped it back to standard setting. Uh, mate, maybe just dampen your uh, throttle controller back. Put it in economy mode, mate. Old Jesse Gleason, the spotter to the stars. If I get him up this, Jesse, I reckon your job's in peril, mate. Up you come. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Woo. You didn't have to winch. Beautifully done. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law. <laughs> Run the winch out. <laughs> what was that? Oh, sorry. Oh, come on now. The teamwork's got to be better. Just enough mumbo in there to send him up because he had to get just that bit more momentum to get out of that ditch, but not so much that we had wheel spin and cars going like this. Textbook, really well done. Right here, Harley, you ready there, mate? Mate, left lane or right? <laughs> These little unit and handhelds are worth their weight in gold. I've had to spot camera car up. Harley, I'm spotting him up now. But both me cameraman and Harley, they tend to mumble a bit on the radio. Well, maybe I'm just getting old and I'm finding it hard to hear, but with these bad boys, just like your in-car one, you just push that red button. Left lane or right? Left lane or right, okay, I'll get him now. You just push that red little red button, it's a replay button, and away you go, you can hear what your mate has said again, especially if you've got a mate that talks like that on his radio. Sean Whale, talking to you. These bad boys, they really are useful. No, nah, mate, I'd stick right down the middle if I were you. A Little bit towards me as you come up. That's us, up you come. Oh yes, over this way. Yeah, now you're talking. Yay! Ah, oh, the little D-Max that could. Well done, Harl. We love it. We love it! She loves it. Bit more to make, bit more to make. Slowly, slowly. Oh, no, no, no. Right, drive it. All right. Oh. Go back if you can. Stop. Stop. What's happened here is the D-Max has got hung up on a rock. Nothing some quick rock packing won't fix. Just creep it. <laughs> Keep it going, yeah, you're right. Keep going. Turn now. Beautiful. Let's get to the top while this sun is in this position. I reckon the ridge is about to light up. I'm so impressed with your driving skills. Ah, look, you thanks, dear. It. It, look, it helps, definitely helps having a good team there to uh, guide you through. Mate, the best bit is we've only just poked our noses into the flippers. I know, this is just the southern end. We've still oh. got central and north to go. Uh, but first, mate, there's just one thing left I need to do today. Oh, soak in the golden hour? God, no, I need a beer. <laughs> I need a golden ale, frothy, cold. <laughs> Oh my lord, with a white head. Right, yeah, well, you know what? I think you've deserved it. I think we've all earned it today. Yeah, let's get back to the van, mate. Off grid. Bloody loving it. 
There's another track there. There's another track. I wonder where that buddy goes. Oh, no, 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 I can't. I can't. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go get the vans. We're going to get out of here. With Billy Goats done and dusted and the day getting on and the vans back in tow, it's time for us to find camp. Flinders Bloody Rangers, I, my heart, my heart is uh, is beating. I love this place. We love it too. Mate, we love it too. But you've now said that about a couple of little South Australian icons. You uh, might be converting up there. <laughs> West will always be best, but I tell you what, there is a very, very close second. And that is going to be South Australia. Look, sun's getting low, guys. What do you reckon? This is all a big free camp along here, all along this riverbed. What do you say we pull in? Yeah, mate, I think we uh, we better get in quickly, get a fire set up. You're on cooking duties. Uh, let's get in quickly before you start making a few more big calls you can't back up. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make one more big call. I've got, a bit of a, uh, I've got a bit of a recipe tonight that I think might just part your hair down the middle. This could be a turning point in your uh, culinary career, Stephanie, when you see what I'm going to do tonight. You ever been to a campsite that's just so good? that setting up takes second priority to having a beer first. This is one of those campsites. Cheers, folks. <laughs> How's this, folks? Right below some of the most spectacular mountain ranges. A cold beer in hand and watching the best bush tally you'll ever see. There's only one thing left that'll top it. Ha-ha, <laughs> a Gazza special. Rightio, it is that time of the evening where I better put some food together. I'm gonna do something that I saw online, add a bit of a twist to it, but I thought it was a really, really clever way to make like the mix between a lasagna and a spag bog combined with a moussaka. I'm just gonna make a really simple bolognese sauce. Let that go for maybe 20 minutes, not cook it through fully. How handy are these pantries here? Look at that. All me bits and bobs are in there. Well, they're my snacks, don't judge me. Healthy snacks. But everything's just there where you need it. Oh, cayenne pepper, pepper and salt. I'm gonna need that a bit later on. We've got a lot of meat. Cherry tomato sauce. Why did I buy that? Because it looks like a beer. And I thought it was funny. Oh, hang on, that's a... Oh, you got it. Where's Jock when you need him? Little bit of salt. Cayenne pepper for the healing properties that are in it. Crispy aromatic chilli oil. Found this a couple of years ago, and I put it in literally everything. Just go like that. That brings the umami flavour in. You all know about umami. We've talked about it before. I'm gonna roughly chop up some tomatoes. And now, I'm just gonna let that cook down for only 10 minutes. Now, ordinarily, if you're doing a spag bog or a lasagna, you'd let that go for hours. The longer, the better. We don't need to because of the next part. Now, folks, stick with me here. This is the pasta you have to have for this dish. You gotta have the colaccio. It looks like a monocle, so you can look through it, as if you're looking at something. Ah, yes, now your gold's not worth anything, sir. I'll give you one dollar an ounce. You need that. <laughs> you need those particular things. Here's the reason why. I want you to think and channel if you can. You're in a David Attenborough. You're looking inside. Somehow they've got that camera angle where the mama bird flies into the nest and all the little baby birds go dee -dee 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 and put their heads up and open their mouths up wide. That's what I've done there. They're all little baby birds in the nest and they've all got their mouths open. And I'm the mama bird. <laughs> I'm a big old mama bird. And I'm about to feed those suckers. My pasta sauce over there is gonna go in and fill up each one of those tubes. Then I'm gonna put a layer over the top. All my little baby birds are full and happy. Ooh, they're hungry. You can, you can hear them burping. So, we've put all that in there and I've purposely kept it a bit more liquidy than you normally would, just so it all sort of slides down into those tubes. There's two more ingredients we're gonna use. First of all, we've got a bit of off-track red right here. What's a bolognese without a bit of red wine? This is actually 2.5 standard drinks, so it's a fair bit. So it's gonna pop a bit of stock in there. Just let it sit, oh, look at that, seeping down to the baby birds. Steph, where are you? Okay, on top of there, like yes. any good baby bird nest, you need to put a capping on top. Mm, you know they put all the feathers on top? Oh yeah, you want me to go collect some sticks? No, 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 I've got exactly, we're gonna do mashed potatoes. <coughs> Deb, instant mashed potato. If you're gonna oh! stick that in some water, <laughs> let me some instant mashed potato. That's how we're gonna line the top. Then okay. we're gonna put cheese on top of that, mm. into the oven, yep. which is the campfire. Mm -hmm. Melt all that in there. 
the baby birds will go all nice and moist. You're doing a good job, Mama Bird. I know. Guys, we are good. Come on in. Oh, oh my lord, that's actually worked. It's held up. How yeah, has that worked? It is delicious. Oh, hot? Yeah, it's going to be hot as heck. But yeah, it's hot as lava, but that is, that is unbelievable. Really that has come out in perfect time. I quite rate the mash, actually, if I do say so much. Well, the Deb. Yeah. Superb, mate. She did well. Yeah. Couldn't have done it on my own. I think that's a win. Yes. Mate. 100% will admit that was experimental, but it has worked out an absolute treat, folks. I'm knackered. I'm going to have one last cheeky red around the fire. Finish dinner, crawl back into the old Jawa back behind me, and I'll catch you folks in the morning. The Flinders really does have champagne camping. To wake up with 360 degree views of the rolling mountains is something that has to be seen to be believed. And to drag our vans the entire way through and have luxury living really does top it off. Oh, thank you, dude. <laughs> Today marks our final day in the Flinders, so we're up nice and early to jam in as much as we can. With camp squared away, it's time to get back on the road. This little stretch of road we're on right now wasn't originally part of our route, but I did a bit of digging and it just looked to me like it had to be spectacular. Now, I'm not gonna spoon feed you where we are right now. It's not hard to find, it's not a secret, but I think half the fun sometimes of these trips is figuring it out for yourself, just a little bit anyway. But let me say this. And I know I say things like this a lot because I see a lot and I sort of get really emotional about them. I love it so much, I'll say it again now. This would have to be one of the most scenic little roads I've driven anywhere in Australia. Big call, I know, it's a huge call. But have a look at this. Look at all the blue wildflowers creeping through here. The green hills. Oh, mountain ranges in the distance. Folks, it really is as epic as it looks. With the endless backdrops come plenty of history, and we've got one spot marked on the map up ahead that's well worth a visit. I'm just gonna pop in down here to the little town of Beltana. Now, Beltana back in the heyday, like a lot of towns out this way, was a thriving community. These days, it's kind of what you'd call a semi-ghost town. Well, it doesn't look like there's too much going on here now, but back in the day, this place was a pumping little town. So I'm pretty sure it was in 1911, Reverend John Flynn came out from Victoria, lived here in Beltana for a year, and realised how harsh the living conditions were here for people in the outback and how there was no access to medical treatment. So. Long story short, over the next decade, he rallied one of the founders of Qantas. He worked with a medical student who had a passion for aviation, all of these different key players to create the Royal Flying Doctor Service. It took its first flight in 1928 from Cloncurry in Queensland, but it is said that it all started. He got the inspiration while he was living here in Beltana in 1911. It's a pretty awesome piece of history right here in the Flinders Ranges. And you can even check out Reverend John Flynn on your $20 note. If you've watched enough Oz Solos and enough off-grid episodes, by now you'll realise these old towns are my jam. I absolutely love them. Beltana, back in the day, she was a thriving mining community, but that Garn Railway, she moved out of town. The main road coming into town, that moved out as well. So of course, there was no access through here, no real need for the town anymore. So it all but collapsed. If it hadn't been for just a couple of locals, or families I should say, that love the place enough to keep it alive and still call this place home. So whilst it's not an operating town per se, i.e. there's no post office, so it doesn't have a postcode, it's not technically a town, but there's a town here, so it's kind of a semi-ghost town, but it's not. It's a strange little place, but it's super cool. It's well set up. You can come and have a look around out through here. All the old ruins are still standing. You can check them out. You can see how life would have been out here. The flies, however, they never left. They are still here in their thousands, and they are driving me You've just got to be at once. Let them crawl on you. I was driving along here and I was thinking to myself how just damn good <laughs> the four-wheel drive tracks are here on Bendleby or in the Flinders in general. Billy goats, that totally caught me out. I mean, that's the sort of thing you'd expect to see in the big high country. 
It also got me to thinking too about winches and winches in general. You know, I've sort of made a career, carved a career out of driving some of the hardest tracks in Australia for the last sort of 15 years or so. And a winch wasn't optional. You have to have a winch doing that kind of stuff. Everyone agrees. Moving into the towing sphere, trust me when I say, when you've got tonnage on the back of your four wheel drive, getting that out of a troubled situation is immeasurably harder when you are towing. When building up the big Y62, there was no doubt in my mind we were putting a rumber up the front, 13 XP, because you just never know when things can go pear-shaped. So do yourselves a favour, folks. I reckon if you're going to be towing anything at all, anywhere at all, grab yourself a reliable winch, put it up the front. You may never need it. But trust me, the one day you do, you'll be thankful you put one up there. You really will. Well, that sticks out like the proverbial. That does. That right there is known locally as the Great Wall of China. Doesn't need any explanation as to why. What it actually is, is the eroded top of that little hill there. All the softer material has been eroded away through the passages of time, leaving only that rocky escarpment exposed at the top. I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling in the water, you can walk up to it. It is 33 degrees out there, blowing a gale. Perfect conditions. This car park at the base marks where we continue on foot. And as is the case with most things, it always looks easier than it is. Whew. It's a long way to the top. Well, I don't think that camera is going to be very stable. Old mate over there is rocking around in the wind. It is blowing an absolute gale up here, folks. But this is the top of the Great Wall of China. 360 degree uninterrupted views of the Flinders Ranges. Oh my God, it is sensational. This is why I come out here. Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Ah! <laughs> Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! It's as close to flying as you'll get. With that one ticked off, our Flinders adventure is coming to an end, but not without ticking off one more iconic location. A place that I reckon the big Y62 might just need a photo at. Mate, what a view. I know, I know. I absolutely love the Flinders Ranges. And even though I've been coming here for the last 32 years, every time it still takes my breath away. Well, that's it, mate. Now it is our backyard, so we can be doing this quite regularly, but uh, look, I'm sad to leave. This has been absolutely stunning. Wow, well, I'll tell you what, we have hit some absolute iconics on this trip so far. I mean, Benelby Ranges with Billy Goat's track. We've camped under River Red Gums. We've driven down the base of some of the most spectacular ranges in the Flinders. And this one right here, this is the one that everyone gets a photo with their vehicle at. None other than Razorback Lookout. And I reckon this is my turn. Have a look at that. Just when you thought the big rig couldn't look any better, park her up at the base of the Flinders Ranges. <laughs> you know what? A couple of years back, I'm embarrassed to say, it was the first time I ever sort of dipped my toe into the Flinders Ranges and I vowed to come back. I've done it. And has it not disappointed? It's blowing me a bloody way. All the drives, every single one of them, will take your breath away. This place is one of those places where you can't take a bad photo. It's stunning. The Flinders Ranges has stolen my heart, as has, and again, most embarrassed to say it, the state of South Australia. It's now become my second favourite state in Australia. There is so much to offer in this little tiny state right here. Now, for us, let the cat out of the bag here just a little bit. We are currently setting ourselves up for a massive 2024. That means we're taking the vans and the vehicles and heading east so that we can drop them off and head home for Christmas and then get back on the road for 2024. So that means we have still got three or four trips up our sleeve this year for off grid. Tonight, Gonna go and find a free camp, get a fire going, crack a couple of brewskis, and start trucking east. We'll catch you guys next time on Off Grid. Next time on Off Grid, we've plotted a course over several thousand kilometres following the mighty Darling River. I'm talking big camps, big skies, and of course, a couple of iconic Aussie pubs. 
with the plan to try and catch ourselves a feed. Oi, Pelican, any yabbies in here? Three, two, one, yabs down. Oh, what are you doing, yabbling? And take in what is the lifeblood of Outback New South Wales.